In this video, we're going to go over what I think are the top most important skills that you must develop as an environment artist in order to create more compelling and immersive environments. Now, this will apply to 3D stills, animations, game environments, and even 2D environment art to an extent. And these are all skills that I'm constantly trying to hone myself. So, let's get started. First off, and this one is probably something that you've heard a lot of people mention before, and that is being able to break complex shapes into simpler ones. Being able to take something that looks incredibly complicated and breaking it down into chunks so that approaching it doesn't seem as daunting. This is one of the most basic and foundational skills that you can develop in order to progress into making more complicated models and environments. And I'm afraid to say that it's not something that you just watch a video about and learn overnight. It does require a little bit of practice and imagination as most of the other skills that I'll be going over in this video. Now, let's take a look at this picture right here which you might want to recreate in 3D for whatever reason. I'm going to be using this as an example of how you can take anything really and break it down into a simpler form. At first glance, it may look very complicated, even though I'm taking a relatively minimal image for a demonstration. Let's first split the image into the foreground, middle ground and background like so. Now it's clear that our focus should be right here around this part, seeing that most of the details are concentrated here. So what do we see here? We can basically see that there's the windmill and this house in front of it and those are the major details that we need to be focusing on first. The house looks pretty much like a box with a prism like shape on top. The windmill can be broken down into simple cylindrical shapes with the blades being another longer cylinder and a rectangle. Now that we have a good base to start with, we can progress into the next iteration where we can look at the bridge right here, the this platform on the windmill, the supporting beams, the grills on the windmill blades and perhaps even the doors and windows in the house. Lastly, we can focus on the smaller details like the antenna the wires and all those things that will turn this from a simple block out into something realistic. In the background we can see that there are multiple windmills and houses. Since we've already worked on this pair for the middle ground, we can simply instance or duplicate them to their spots in the background and just tweak them a little to make them look less repetitive. What I've noticed that has helped me to visualize these things in simpler shapes is knowing the shapes that I have available to myself and the tools that I have in my disposal to manipulate those shapes. For example, we can literally add a cylinder with a low vertices count, add some loop cuts and scale them in and we'd pretty much have the base mesh for the windmill. It's also helpful to notice the silhouette and see which shape resembles it the most. Once you figure that out, you can immediately get a good idea of what base object to use. Now if you want to practice this, I'd highly recommend that you check out some references of the things you like which could be weapons, furniture, and just try to model them in 3D. This will force you to see things in their basic primitive form and it'll subconsciously build your ability to visualize anything as simpler shapes and also increase your efficacy in modeling at the same time. It's also important to reuse whatever you can in order to save time and resources, which are going to become more and more important as you progress into more complicated environments. These can be pre-made models from your older projects. It could be a model that you download or anything really as long as it remains inside the constraints of your theme and the polycount budget if you have one. And I just want to put it out there that there is no shame in using models made by someone else. Unless you're a beginner modeler and you're trying to get better at it, in that case you might want to attempt to make it yourself first. The next very important skill that I think you need is attention to detail. And I don't mean being able to just see like a, like how a grain of sand is oriented in this. I mean, that degree of attention to detail would be helpful when you're trying to recreate something one to one. But what I'm referring to is seeing an image or concept art and asking questions about its world. What kind of people live there? If people even live there? What would their lifestyle look like? How they would interact with whatever it is that is present in the concept art? What they might be doing for survival, etc. This would be a major factor that differentiates something that simply just looks all right from something that looks truly gorgeous, lived in, realistic, and just simply feels right. Even if you're going for a stylized and fantasy world, I think it's still important to ground everything by asking yourself these questions because we subconsciously judge whatever we see by our existing knowledge of logic and the laws that apply to our universe. This will also allow for good storytelling in general because we don't necessarily need a full-blown animation to tell a story. It could simply be an image crafted with all those right questions in mind and people will automatically realize the story behind it. I also want to mention that if you're going for realism, I think it's very important to be observant in real life as well. You can definitely look at references, but it won't always give you all the information that you need and it certainly won't surpass actually physically standing there and touching the object and getting to know more about its texture, the information that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten just by staring at a 2D image on a screen. You can also collect way more references on your own and then you'd have seen it in real life and you also have all the images to later relate and recall everything that you've observed. Our brain already 
keeps a lot of details about real life in our subconscious mental library but then you look at the real thing and you realize how wrong that perception was. So being attentive to your surroundings may also help clear out some of those incorrect preconceived notions about realism. Now we have the core skills covered but there's actually more to it. You can't just go around and keep adding more and more details to your scene and hoping it ends up looking nice at the end. Trust me, I've been there. There needs to be purposeful placement of your objects in the scene to ensure proper readability. This can be done by being more attentive to how you would interact with the world if you were physically present there, as I mentioned in the previous part. It's also important to have some contrast among the objects in your scene in the form of different shapes, different sizes, and positions, which is super important for an attractive composition and also helps to set up a sense of scale. Being consistent with the theme, style, and scale of your objects are very important factors that you must not neglect while building building an environment, the lack of which will make the environment look very unnatural, chaotic, and just not pleasing to look at. Finally, I want to talk about the importance of color theory and knowledge of lighting. You can do everything right literally everything, but it'll still render out to look like absolute garbage if you mess up the lighting or the colors. Knowing how colors can be used to improve your compositions, tell better stories, or even trigger certain emotions in the viewers are all things that you're going to be very bad at in the beginning, unless you have an innate knack for these things, which I really don't. Lighting also plays a very important role in composition and overall readability. If you're a beginner and you've only recently started getting into these technicalities, this may seem very scary, but I really promise you that it gets easier with practice and almost becomes a second nature at some point. You do need to learn these things of course in order to not fall into some common pitfalls and to not develop bad habits. That's why I'll be linking to some great videos that I found while researching for this topic in the description. You can jo also join out our discord server and check out the resources channel where people regularly post cool videos, tools, tips and tricks they come across and I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. And of course we also have a help channel if you have any questions, a work in progress channel if you want feedback and just a general chat to just make new artist friends. Now that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. I've only given an overview or just mentioned some of the topics in this video and you of course might want to know more about it so I'll try to include more in-depth tutorials and guides in the description. And if you have any questions you can simply comment down below and I'll try my best to answer. I want to thank Miroslav and Dan for helping me with this video. They're both super talented artists so I'll link their art station pages in the description below so that you can check them out. Now, if you're new to the channel consider checking out some of my other videos which are mainly detail breaks breakdowns and tutorials of my animations and other artwork, software tutorials, techniques, guides, discussions, etc. Subscribe if they interest you and if you want to see more of my future content. Now that marks the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.